be live, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, there's many people in here. So, hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, everyone. Okay. So, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I would like to take this opportunity to, like, thanks, um, uh, Covalent team for, like, um, inviting us, Kronos team here to, to do this, like, you know, joint community call with, uh, with, you know, the, the CLO fam, our community, and also the community from, uh, the, uh, Covalent side as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, what am I going to do today is like, uh, I think uh, we are going to do a you know quick overview of like Chronos and some of those like uh, developer related resources that we could provide, uh, and then I will pass it to the Covalent team to do uh, a demonstration, and then I will pass it to one of our member Rick uh, to demonstrate a little bit on the uh, Chronos play, which is our GameFi SDK for Unity, um, uh, Unreal, and also C plus plus game developer. And then uh, at the end of at the end, end of the call, we will also cover some of the uh, incentive for um, developer to build on Chronos. Yeah, and then uh, at the end of the the call, we will be having uh, like QA section as well. Yeah, so I will just get started. Um, yeah, so uh, welcome uh, to 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 this uh, community call. And then um, so overall, I mean, I would just give a brief intro of Chronos. Chain, maybe you guys already know Chronos Chain, but um, I will do it very quick. Yeah, so Chronos is uh, the, the first Ethereum compatible layer one blockchain network that, that builds on Cosmo SDK, supported by crypto.com, crypto.org, and more than 300 app developers and partners. So today, uh, as you may see on Twitter, the hashtag CROFAM ecosystem representing uh, an addressable user base for more than 50 million people all over the world yeah and i would say the the mission of chronos is very simple and also challenging uh, this is to make it easy and safe for the next billion crypto user to adopt the web free with a focus on game and also DeFi. yeah i mean in general, I would say that uh, on the technical perspective, Chrono is way more than just a simple EVM compatible chain. Uh, what makes Chrono special is that it's this unique position that links up the com a community of uh, Ethereum and also Cosmos ecosystem. In particular, Chronos is built on top of the technology called Evermean, which is, you know, as in the picture, it's like Ethereum connecting with uh, Evermean, uh, connecting with Tendermean. Uh, which is an open source project that uh, brings Cosmo SDK and is underneath consensus engine, which is Tendermint together with uh, standard Ethereum practice. Yeah, and uh, we also include our GitHub repo here. So if you want some further details on the open source project, can you have a look? Yeah, um, Tendermint already works well for many uh, different networks, uh, which allows a high transaction throughput and uh, provide an instant transaction finality uh, on the block commitment. That means that uh, once the transaction, uh, uh, the transaction will be finalized when it has been included to a block. It was chosen to, the, to be the consensus engine of um, Kronos due to following reasons. Firstly, it is backed by formal research. Um, and secondly, it has been robustly tested, implemented, and adopted by many high-profile projects. Uh, there is also a strong tracking record that we can see uh, where Tendermint has already been uh, in a continuous development since 2014. And one of the very important features of Tendermint and also on top of it, Cosmo SDK is the modular uh, architecture. What does it mean that is uh, it offers a flexibility regarding of rich application and uh, are developed on top of it and how they are developed. In particular, it enables uh, our team and also the Cosmos community to build a special module allows uh, EVM related logic to run uh, at the top level, while the tender mean would take care or take care of all the consensus logic at the back for us. Yeah, simply speaking, I would say that um, Kronos is the EVM compatible chain that comes along with all the goodies from the Cosmos uh, SDK ecosystem. So um, from its robustness, robustness at low level, at a consensus level, 
to the ability to communicate with other uh, Cosmos SDK chains in a native manner uh, by leveraging the IBC, which is uh, the in inter-blockchain com communication protocol. Um, so currently we already been uh, connected to crypto.org chain, uh, Cosmos Hub and uh, a cash network via IBC protocol. Yeah, we have also been continuously developing the technology called uh, Graphite Bridge and its module, uh, which allows the user to port their uh, assets uh, to and from Ethereum mainnet to Kronos in a native and decentralized manner. Uh, this feature has uh, already entered the public testnet phase, um, and we're super excited about it. Yeah, on the value uh, on the value proposition, uh, what makes Kronos unique um, is the following. Uh, so first of all, is the instant uh, uh, is the instant probability, uh, which means that okay, this is an EVM compatible chain that supports EVM smart contract, and of course. Uh, all the bridges, uh, if this is uh, connected to by the, the smart contracts directly, and which comes along with the IBC capability as just mentioned. And the next thing I would say is uh, the low friction. At the chain level, uh, transaction cost is relatively low. Um, it also comes along with uh, high throughput and final in, uh, finality, fast fi finality. Uh, we, we take the developer experience as one of the most uh, highest priority um, items. Uh, we reduce the friction of integrating or migrating by simply making Solidity and all those EVMs to just work out of the box. Yeah, and also by looking at the on-chain activities, we can see that there is a strong user adoption of Kronos. So if you check it on Divalama, you can see that Kronos is one of the top seven chains in terms of TVL. Uh, with more than 800k users, uh, more than 50 millions of transactions since we launched at November 2021. Yeah, finally, which is uh, one of the most important and organic part is the community, of course. Um, so building on Kronos would put you put your dApps to a bigger stage with spotlights on. That also means that um, easy on ramp uh, your your dApps to more than. More, more than 50 millions of users of crypto.com, hashtag CROVAM. Yeah. And uh, for developers, um, uh, if you like to build on Kronos, there is many uh, toolings and um, many uh, soft stuff, uh, hard stuff that you can leverage. So the, first of all, is the rapid version of the world's uh, top 50 cryptocurrency. So you can find, for example, like crypt, uh, uh, USDC, USDT, or like, any like top 50 cryptocurrency that uh, you, you could name. And uh, we already integrate with uh, more than 16 leading uh, wallets that includes MetaMask, uh, Crypto.com DeFi wallet, uh, Trust wallet, uh, et cetera. And uh, uh, the native IBC cost chain connectivity that uh, we, we, we have just mentioned. And um, so one thing that uh, we will cover in this call today is a Kronos play, which is a uh, game five SDK, uh, the build for web, Unity, Unreal, and C++ game developers so that they can you know, focus on the game building and at the same time, they can uh, connect to Kronos very easily. And uh, we also have very generous uh, developer support program that includes um, uh, ecosystem grants, uh, accelerator program, and a hackathons uh, that I will gonna cover later on in this call. Yep. And then um, on the EVM side, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, the developer experience, very important. So what do we prepare is like um, many of the major EVM uh, developer toolkits, such as Solidity, Travel, Hi-Hat, you name it, uh, is already supported by Kronos. And um, uh, we also cover the, the graphic bridge. In the future, uh, we will foresee there will be a native decentralized bridge that uh, allow users to bridge the SS2 and from uh, Ethereum to, to, to Kronos. And of, of course, one of the very uh, important part is that we already have uh, several leading JSON RPC endpoints providers and indexer uh, supporting Kronos. Uh, for example, Blockdaemon, Morales, uh, RockX, and uh, today's main topic, uh, Covalent. Yeah. 
So I will pass it to uh, Covalent's team for, for the for the demos. Yeah, Let's take it away. Thank you, Leslie. That was yeah. very interesting. Learned a lot about uh, the architecture of Kronos and what you guys are trying to do there. Uh, let me just share my screen. Hmm. This one. All right, you guys uh, see my screen now? Okay, yes, so yep. as Leslie has mentioned, um, uh, you know, Kronos has provided a, a list of EVM compatible tools for you to use in your development. And uh, uh, one, of, one of the tools that they provided is Covalent. And what we do at Covalent is to make life easier for you as a developer by providing you um, a rich multi-chain data through our REST APIs, traditional REST APIs, right? So let me just go straight into the uh, slides here. So we are a um, like a single unified solution to, that is queryable from the cloud for you to get uh, rich data from any chain. And that includes um, like balances data, NFT data, um, log events of transactions, the number of transfers, all the stuff that you typically would want to know from each chain, um, we provide that through our APIs. You don't necessarily need to code. Um, you can put the query URL string into the uh, browser, you know, and uh, you get the JSON response with the data that you want. Or if you can format it to CSV, you can download it into Google Sheets. You can get the uh, Excel version. So, uh, you know, so how we see ourselves as providing value to developers that's on top of tools like uh, ethos.js or web3.js is the ease at which you can get things set up within seconds using our architecture without really needing to know the underlying workings of um, Solidity development, for instance. And uh, so where we see ourselves coming in, you know, uh, blockchains layer one or layer two, they host the data and they expose it to the public in a form of nodes. Um, we see ourselves as the, this data layer that provides quick, fast uh, on-chain data that, to, that powers uh, lots of applications directly. And let's give you a demo. Let's um let's see what we can do with our API here. And I've found um a couple of very interesting integrations with Kronos that uh that I'm gonna use in my demo as well. So last night I found this address from Kronos Scan, and this is just a random address, right? And uh I'm gonna show you how we can you know, use this, get the balances of this random address using our API. So what is our API? This is the main page that you guys should, should check out, which is our API reference page. I'm just gonna get, go to the main page here. So this is the, the Bible of uh, our product here. So all the, all the uh, references, you can see it here. Um, we, we have got class A endpoints, class B endpoints, we can get balances, we can get NFTs. And using that random address, I'm just going to show you what we can do here. Let's say you want to get token balances for address in, uh, in a tool like um, web3.js, right? You need to provide the uh, token contract address and the ABI for every single token that the wallet holds. So our approach is basically you provide the wallet address itself, and then we'll return you all the tokens that that wallet holds, right? Instead of like you filling in all the gaps the other way around. So let us go and test it out. So for this endpoint, this is the endpoint, right? You input the chain ID, which in this case would be 25. Chain ID address and the address here, I've inputted the demo address. 
So I'll just copy it onto the URL for you all to see. I've actually kind of already. Okay, let, let me uh, do it live so that you can see it. Chain ID of 25 with this address. And here you need to get yourself an API key. I wouldn't be supplying it in a URL string because we also use a basic oath. Oh gosh, you've already seen my API key. I need to invalidate this <laughs> after this call. Don't spam our servers with my API key, please. I was intending to hide it, but you know, but looks like you guys have already seen it. Anyway, um, so here we go. Let's try it. So you can either supply it using the uh, query string or you can put it in the basic auth here using Postman. And here we see the balances of this person. And let's just do a quick comparison. This person is holding some true USD uh, of this balance amount in way. And uh, we compare it to, um, to chrono scan here. And you know, true USD here. And then the second token wrapped crow mm, with this balance amount. Yep. So uh, the reason why this the the units are different is because we return the responses in way, and you need to multiply, you need to divide that by 10 to the power of the contract decimals, which is 18 here, to get it in the uh, base standard unit form. It's just one single line of calculation. And so this guy holds probably like 11 tokens or so 12 tokens, including native network tokens. And you can see, I can't collapse the response items, but it looks to be around that number, right? So yeah, you can base this, this kind of response is good for building wallets and such. Uh, okay, so you, can, you saw an example of how to get balances using our API. And right now we are also developing a Web3 component library where, you know, if you find that passing the JSON response is a little bit too, uh, too much of a hassle, you can simply download this component library if you work with React, right? And you can plug it in and it'll give you all the token balances of an address. So this is literally, you know, if you want to build a page that re returns the balances and you don't want to get the, into the weeds too much, what this is doing is that it plugs the API. You need to supply your API key in, with this as well, but um, it pipes that data into a React component for you. So it makes your life a little bit easier. Give it a star. We are currently actively developing this component library to include way more resources than just this uh, token balances component, and it'll come in handy one day. Yeah, I'll just drop the link in the, uh, oh yeah, we've already dropped the link there. Awesome. So what else can you get? You can get NFT data. And uh, I was just exploring Chrome C a little bit, uh, sorry. And I found this NFT collection, which is MM Treehouse which is, uh, I think, the one of the top NFT collections on uh, this marketplace, right, on Kronos ecosystem. And this is their contract address. I've just copied their contract address. And looking at our API, what kind of data can you get? First, you can get the, all the token IDs within that contract, which is useful if you don't know like what kind of, how many token IDs are there, how many are minted, et cetera. And with the token IDs, you can get further information, uh, what we call uh, and what is commonly known in this industry as uh, NFT external metadata. So let's say we've got this like metadata for this, uh, for we've got the contract address and token ID. I'm just gonna key in the, this one again, 25 contract address for, MM Treehouse is this one, NFT. Let's say I'm going to pull up a random token ID. 
I've done a query beforehand. I know that they've got 10,000 tokens. Maybe let's do the uh, 9999th token just for fun. And let's see um, what we get. There we go. We've got the metadata of this. Uh, it doesn't have a token price in way, probably not sold or something. We've got the, uh, the name of it, the description. The description text is typically what you see here. There we go. We've got the images. Let's uh, click through to one of the images to see what they return. There we go. So this is the token. And we've got it in uh, different resolutions as well, I think. And also we've got attributes, which is what is, you know, returned uh, here, I think. So all those are on-chain data that, uh, that you see on platforms like OpenSea, et cetera. So this is just for this one token. Um, yeah, and you can also supply the contract address to see all the NFT transactions that's taken place there. All right. I think I was going to go into one more um, DeFi example, but I think I'm running a bit late, so I'm going to skip that. What else can you build using the uh, Covalent API? So again, these are the supporter endpoints. Please try and explore yourself to see what kind of data that they provide. Uh, you, can, you can build platforms like OpenSea very easily with our API, right? And these are the respective endpoints that links it to different pages of this page that you can uh, build on. Some of the data, like for instance, the list price, I believe, and also the offers, those are centralized on OpenSea and uh, we don't have that data because it's not on-chain. We provide only on-chain data. And it's also a good exercise if you're a dev to kind of you know, break down a, a site, uh, especially a popular service like OpenSea and see what is actually on-chain and what is actually not on-chain. And our tool allows you to do that. You can build like portfolio managers like Zappa and uh, uh, very easily you can churn up this main page with the token balances as we've seen just now. Uh, you can also get like the fees information through our API and more. You can build DEX related information like Uniswap. Uh, I didn't get into that example just now, but like I believe some of the uh, popular DEXs on Kronos include, what's it called? The VV, okay, VV something. I can't remember. But, VVS, uh, it is. Yeah. yeah, VVS. VVS. So you can uh, do swaps. You can see the pools on VVS. You can see the liquidity as well as the 24-hour uh, volume information through these endpoints. You can build wallets, of course, very easily with our API. Uh, yeah, you can build sites like CoinGecko as well. So that ends, that puts an end to my part of our introduction to Covalent API. Uh, before we pass it on to Rick, I'm just going to show you a quick demo of um, what my, of this um, Unity web uh, GL integration that we've done that involves uh, Kronos as well. Just give me a sec while I pull that video up. All right, I think I have this. I'm going to just going to download, download this and hopefully you can see it right there. One second. All right. So I don't think the accompanying audio to this, so you'll be hearing me, um, explaining it over this video. So there we go. You see it playing. So this was built in, a, I believe, the Unity uh, WebGL platform. You see here that, um, you know, we provided the basic login page through MetaMask, asks you to switch from Kronos mainnet 
uh, Ethereum to Kronos. And then you get displayed your NFT within the context of uh, the Unity development platform itself. And then you can do things like transferring NFTs. Just let it play for just a little bit. And you enter the address that you want to transfer the NFT to within the context of the game and done. So I believe this would be useful for uh, Unity developers to quickly integrate this into their game, right? And yeah, that's, that's just a quick demo. Sorry for this uh, not so great, um, what do you call explanation? My colleagues is my colleague was the uh, professional at uh, with Unity. I'm like pretty new. I, I know nothing about Unity, right? So I'll pass it to Rick, who will go who will dive way deeper into how you can integrate um, web pre components into your uh, game using the Kronos SDK, right? Awesome. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Thanks for the for the demo. Um, yes, so I guess um, what I will be starting with is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And before we jump into any sort of um, editor, um, I want to give you a quick introduction um, to Kronos Play, you have you have heard it uh, probably a couple of times already. Uh, Leslie introduced it before. Um, it's uh, it's basically something we have been working on very hard lately, also to um, you know um, provide a gaming SDK uh, really um, that opens up the opportunities for game developers to connect to the Kronos uh, network. Uh, and that's the basis. I, I think that that's a good summary of uh, what it is and what uh, we can do. So what I'm planning to do um, for the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes is um, I want to do a little bit of live uh, testing within Unity and show you a couple of um, modules that we have here in our SDK. Uh, and also really uh, hope to, to get your attention and invite you to have a look at the, at the SDK uh, once you finish with this meeting, get your feedback, get your opinions, and, and perhaps also see some of the cool stuff that you will be building. But why don't we start? So um, I think the, the most important aspect is um, to, to keep in mind is um, we have provided this SDK um, to give uh, developers, game developers specifically, the opportunity to connect and interact with the Kronos networks, uh, but also provide uh, sort of in-game uh, functionality uh, with, uh, with NFTs and, and uh, tokens. And that's the second thing to bear in mind. The, sec the third one is um, also start to explore all the different authentication modules uh, that you can have within the game. Um, there's, there's many, many, many different options that we're exploring right now. Uh, I will show you one example with the Web3 model within WebGL. Um, and obviously, there's much, much more happening. Uh, there, there was just a module we released very recently to integrate uh, with other existing modules, such as um, the CDC Pay API. Uh, and uh, there's also going to be a lot of opportunities to start to play around with the covalent APIs. So I think um, the opportunities are just endless in that regards. Um, I will mainly focus on our Unity SDK. However, if you would like to have a look at the other modules, there is also an Unreal Engine plugin that you can use and explore if you want to start to build um, you know, uh, using uh, the Unreal Engine. Uh, platform uh, over, let's say, the Unity one. And um, most lately, we have also released a Kronos Play C++ SDK. Um, that is, you know, for anyone uh, out there that uh, is interested uh, in getting their hands on the uh, Play SDK and, and, and playing around perhaps, you know, with some C++, they have the opportunity to do so as well. But for the interest of time, I will keep it with Unity for today. Um, so let's just jump into the tab 
the first thing that you will sort of see there's a couple of requirements obviously for those that have never used unity uh, or have never built with unity um, there's really a step-by-step -step guide to get started and all the requirements uh, that you might need uh, on your machine and there's also uh, some information on the, the RPC methods that you can currently use within um, the different functions and methods that I will show you in a minute. But you know, uh, on a baseline, right now we use RPC methods for the testnet and the RPC method for the mainnet uh, and with their respective chain IDs. Uh, what you will notice is that all the modules are using the mainnet. So if you do uh, build using the testnet, the Kronos testnet, uh, just remind, uh, remember that when you start to uh, sort of um, implement the different um, objects uh, in, in Unity, that you make use of the right uh, RPC endpoint. All right. So I think it's time to jump into our first Unity editor. And I say first because um, I also want to show you a quick uh, demo game example that I have been uh, working on, 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 on my uh, explore the capabilities of the API and the, the different functions. Um, but the first one is, is more general. So what I will be doing is um, let me just open up Unity. Uh, that's a very simple 3D game uh, that I've created here. I've imported uh, what I want to do is um, actually I just prepared already a game object which I which I'm calling uh, test object here for simplicity's sake. Um, and I've also created a script which I call test script also for simplicity's sake. And what I want to do is I'm just going to open the script because that's um, where we're going to run a couple of functions now. And I want to start with, um, let me close this. Uh, I'm going to head back into our SDK. I want to start with the very first, um, uh, here with the very first method. Now what we want to do is uh, we want to get the, the, the balance of one of my test addresses. So I'm not going to create a new class. I'm just going to use the one I have in here. Uh, it's going to remove this. And as, as you remember, um, I mentioned I'm going to use a test net. And for that reason, I want to actually change this endpoint to point towards testnet endpoint. And then I also want to use my testnet account address. Uh, then I save the script, head back into Unity. And when I run this, It will return my balance. Obviously, this is not converted. That is not my balance. That is my uh, test crow, which is around 123 test crow. And all I did is, if we come back in here, let me stop this quickly again. Um, I used you know, the different strings and the different options uh, within here. And I use an RPC method. And what I'm, I want to ask is the balance of the EVM method. And then I pass the chain, the network, the account, and the RPC. And whenever I want to print, so what is going to return is basically the balance that corresponds to my address. And the same, um, let's say, if you want to get the actual ARC721 balance, the actual NFT balance, just go ahead and copy this. 
replace it. And again, I sort of, yeah, what I need to do is I always have to change because I'm using the testnet, guys, I have to change the RPC method. Um, actually, in the future, we will probably work on an option to switch the same way we switch um, in the beginning uh, to print you already, to provide you already with the versions for mainnet and testnet. So you don't have to switch around. I want to get my address. Um, but now what I need is I need my contract address. And what we're going to do is because I've created a couple of test NFTs, um, I switch into the NFT faucet. That's something that we have provided as well for the test net. And that's basically uh, a playground, very similar to the, the, the test net um, in open SeaWorks where you can provide um, test NFTs, so to speak. And from here, I want to get the contract address. And you can see here already, there's a couple of game items, which uh, we will get to in a minute. But for now, I just need um, my contract address. OK, I'm going to save this. And I'm going to head back into my editor. And when I run this, I will receive the balance of the NFTs that I have in the console. And in fact, he returns four, meaning that the address that I'm using here for the testnet um, is currently owning four and total the count of four NFTs. OK. Okay, we will get to the faucet in a minute. We will also get to the uh, items in a minute. Um, but first, you know, I, I want to give you a last quick um, walk through the NFT, at the, the Unity section in here. Um, as you can see, there's also some functions for um, getting the owner, the ownership of specific token and address, but also stuff like importing NFT metadata. And also there's a couple of examples such as, you know, a login script, a login example, and uh, really a collection of all the scripts that you can use and, and customize, so to speak, to your own needs once you start to build your games. And that's just some of the examples, you know, you, you really can uh, use within Unity. And I think there's a lot of more opportunities um, within the Unity framework, but these are just uh, some of the examples of uh, the different functions that you can provide. OK, next thing that I want to show you is, so what I did is a couple of months ago, I built a very simple um, top-down. I worked on a very, very simple top-down RPG, which is based on 3D uh, and not, uh, uh, so it's 2D and not 3D. And it's based on the Thomas Daniel collection. Uh, and it's very simple, you know, it has a couple of uh, avatars and characters. And um, specifically what happens in the game is you have different NFTs that are spread around the map. Um, specifically, it's a helmet and, uh, and the pauldrons that uh, my character can go and equip uh, once he collides with the, the objects. And there's also two different functions, such as you know, sending a coin uh, to another uh, player. And also uh, something I had been working on is uh, a, a sort of a rewarding, daily rewarding mechanism. You know, whenever uh, I log in and I go and pick up a coin, it's, uh, it, it basically sends me some funds to my, um, to my test address. So that's it in a nutshell, um, but I actually want to start to show you this game. So why don't you just log in? Uh, what happens here is I have a selection of the different wallets that I've implemented. So this is using the web tree model implementation. Um, it's also provided by Chainsafe. They use the same um, option here. 
Uh, it's very simple. You know, you can choose your um, MetaMask is usually the default provider, but then you can go uh, and, and usually, you know, add the different providers. We have uh, Wallet Connect and we have the DeFi wallet in here. Um, but obviously, there is a, an option also to add additional wallets um, if, if a game wants to open up, you know, more than two or three wallets. What I will do is I will select MetaMask and what happens here now, I selected MetaMask. Since this is not the first time I log in, um, the signature happened already in the very beginning. Uh, I managed to connect. You can see that I have my address here in the top and I have a balance of 123 Tuscrow. And yeah, that's my character. So if I start to walk around, the first thing that I wanna do here is I wanna select this coin here. And what happens is um, that a transaction is created where I send one task row to another address. In this case, it's another test address that I've created, but in the context of a real game, this could have been a real player. And I might just want to create a transaction to send one of my task rows to the other player. So once this is done, I come back to the game. 123 is my balance right now. So in a couple of seconds, it should um, reduce to 122. Here it happened. And in the meantime, you know, I want to see what happens on the map. Okay, here you can see one of my um, NFTs. If you come back here, we see that it's the head object. And it, uh, it got into the game. I go in there. I want to pick it up. And now I equip the helmet. Uh, let me close this here. I walk around and try to find the pauldrons. See where they are. Actually know where they are. And then I just equip them as well. And so we go. Um, now, this was a very simple example, uh, I suppose, of how you can import your NFTs. Um, and then replace your game object with the sprite and the texture of your NFTs. And then with a little bit of scripting, you know, you can um, change direction of the helmet, check the database of a corresponding uh, item, and then generate the different dimensions of the item. Um, but there's another thing that I want to show you very quick. I mentioned before. So let me stop this game here actually and go to the editor. And the reason why I'm going to do this in the editor is because I have um, a reward function that does not work on the browser because of course restrictions. So this is actually using an internal endpoint that the team created and it only works you know, with some internal configuration. And for that reason, I have to run it in the editor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the game. and pick up the faucet. But that's, this didn't actually work because I'm not connected to um, a specific server configuration. But essentially what happens here is it triggers a web form request basically. And then that direct, um, the, the, the web form triggers a post request on one of our internal APIs. And that internal API is then providing um, my address or the address that I choose to be the main address. Uh, in the case of the game, you know, I will have a player prefs that provide the address once I select my uh, wallet and log into the game, and then uh, subsequently provide the funds as a reward to the gamer's address. Exactly the same mechanism that is used nowadays on, you know, the other explorer faucets. Um, the same process, the same examples, the same methods can be really recreated as well in the context of a game and in the context of a Unity game specifically. Okay, and with that, I will conclude the demonstration and turn it back to who's going to take on from here.
Awesome. That is looking awesome. I think I saw, you know, the future of gaming right there, where everything is so seamlessly integrated. I think for the last bit, we're going to op just open it up for questions, right? Uh, I think, yeah, before that, I would like to also oh, yeah. share a little bit on the, uh, on our, um, our developer support programs of Kronos. Yeah. So uh, pretty much it's like, uh, as mentioned earlier, that we have a, a developer support programs, uh, including the Kronos ecosystem grant. So you can see that uh, the, the target audience here will be, you know, retail DeFi, GameFi, or infrastructure related projects. And um, well, we will provide like a simple, uh, sample, sorry, simple grants, uh, typically around this amount. And then we will also provide some marketing and also technical support for you to, you know, join this uh, Crow Farm family. And uh, the, the um, it is also subjected to some of the achievement up on milestone basis. For example, uh, when the project goes live on Kronos, uh, comes back from the you know security audit reports, and also like several certain kind of like achievement according to the different aspect of the projects. Um, yeah, so in general, this is available to you know early stage projects, as well as uh, some established projects that are planning to migrate and also expand to um, Kronos. So that is the ecosystem grant, and then uh, uh, we, uh, if you're interested, you can uh, look into more in information on chronos.org/slash grants. Yeah, and the other one is uh, some people call Chronos Accelerator Programs. Um, so the target uh, audience one here it will be once again like retail DeFi, GameFi infrastructure, um, but uh, the, the project is uh, more expected to to launch natively on Chronos and uh, subsequently um, multi-chain expansion is uh, also encouraged. So this um, accelerator program runs uh, three to four cohorts uh, per year. So we have just finished uh, the, the last cohort. Um, and the, the difference between this accelerator program with the grants is like this will come to initial grant uh, followed by um, potential investment by Chronos Lab and as well as other accelerator partners uh, as the investor. Um, so on top of that, we will also uh, extend, provide extensive marketing and technical support, including mentoring, masterclasses, and a demo day to, you know, uh, put more lights on, on your projects. So this is available to early stage project at the uh, pre-seed or seed stage who have not yet uh, raised any institutional funds uh, before. And uh, similar uh, information that we can uh, you can check this, the, the information on chronos.org slash accelerators. Yep. So this is the, um, um, this is the developer support program that I would like to cover. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, Leslie. And mm -hmm. on our end, if you want to get more involved in the covalent ecosystem and try out our tech and integrate it into your uh, application, we will be at all the ETH Global uh, and Gitcoin hackathons for the rest of this year and possibly moving forward as well. So we sponsor our prizes at the hackathons. Typically, they tend to be around between like uh, a prize pool of uh, 5 to 7.5K. So um, it's a great way for you to, uh, an excuse for you to learn the new tech and uh, integrate it and, you know, win some prizes. Uh, as long as you use our endpoints in your build, we tend to, and, and the idea is quite good, we'll, we'll give out the prizes, yeah. Yeah, awesome, I think. Uh, and, and then also uh, on the hackathon side, uh, we, we previously, in the last year, we, we host quite a lot of hackathons. Uh, the, the last one was a uh, uh, HDHCC and then the next coming one in the next month uh, will be uh, Morellas. We are co-hosting a um, one month long um, hackathon with Morellas. So uh, kindly check that on our website uh, to see if you would like to apply that. So that one is uh, uh, an all night uh, manner. So anyone, as long as you have internet access, you will be able to join and you know start building on Kronos. Uh, and you know, win the prize as well. 
Awesome. Shall we leave the last 10 minutes open for questions, if there's any? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sure. Okay. So, yeah, I've got uh, some questions in the Q&A. Will the live stream be uploaded? I think it will, right? If you're talking about this live stream. Uh, I let's need to, do you know if this uh this is recorded? I uh, yeah, this is recorded. I can, yeah. I can see that in 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 uh on, okay on, on cool. Zoom. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, it is recording. Yes, so it will be uploaded. Thank you. Yeah, and then I think we can also you know share that uh to both of our channel uh on on YouTube. Mm. And um, Rick has already answered one question by uh, someone who asked. I haven't been using Unity for a while, but I've always used C Sharp to develop in Unity. I also missed the beginning of this meeting. Is C Sharp fine to integrate uh, Unity to Kronos Chain? And Rick's answer is uh, yes. Uh, it's mostly C Sharp, but there are options for cross framework implementation as well. Yeah, maybe I can add some, some lines on that. Um, yeah. what, what I really mean by it is, um, you know, typically when you create a script in Unity, you will use uh, C sharp. Um, but you know, there's moments when you can, when you when you will jump to a different framework. And uh, I think WebGL is a really good example of that because um, the Web Tree model piece of the presentation um, is actually uh, taken care of. Uh, let's say JavaScript and uh, and a couple of uh, uh, connectors that make use, you know, of the the HTML. Uh, in the browser and then bundle it together for DLL, which is then accessible to C Sharp uh, within the scripts. And uh, I think um, C Sharp is going to be the main uh, language being used in Unity, uh, to the best of my knowledge. Um, but you know, there is moments when you jump um, to 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 languages such as JavaScript and WebTree model is one of those examples, specifically in the context of uh, um web uh, web gel builds awesome uh any more questions feel free to just drop them into the q a yeah i think i got a question from a community member just dm me uh, uh i think the one of the question that um the he had he or she have is that uh what is the difference between like subgraph and and in covalent in in this use case that you demonstrate. Okay, good question. So, uh, from what I understand of subgraphs, I'm not an expert. I think you have to like um, write individual subgraphs to get like a specific on-chain data that you want, right? So our method, uh, basically allows you to skip that step by providing you a more standardized series of endpoints that you will get that uh, across across multiple different chains. So um, for instance, if you want to get balance, as you saw just now in my example, uh, you just plot that into the browser and that the balances you know, come back to you without needing to have much uh, pre configuration in this instant uh, writing subgraph. And of course, like um, their approach is like, I think using like GraphQL. Uh, ours is like a traditional uh, REST API. Yep, great question. Thanks. Yeah, got it. I think that um, in general, the it, yeah, I think the, the no, like no coding part. It's a yeah. it's a definitely a plus on on covalent, um, especially mm. for uh, you know the the demonstration that you show us. Uh, if you have like a React, you know front end, and then you can just like directly plop mm. it in, and then uh, in in this case, it's like a, it got integrated with the front end uh, pretty, pretty smoothly, and yeah. I think the the learning curve for subgraph is is definitely something uh, yeah. when, when we're trying to try, trying to do it as well and. Uh, the the thing is like a, you you would have to really understand what you have to do and uh and start building this graph, yeah. Yep, exactly. So you know when you're working on let's say a uh, a web page with multiple pages, right? Especially if it's cross chain, right? So 
our value there is really like giving you the option to completely abstract yourself, abstract that part away, you know, so that you, you can focus on UI, you can focus on UX. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is something very important, just like um, uh, when, we, when we think about uh, starting uh, working on Cosmos, uh, uh, sorry, Chronos Play SDK, that is something mm. that uh, we, we get the request from the community. It's like, okay, I'm a game developer, but well, it's not necessary that uh, I would have to like pick up all those blockchain related stuff. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and I think the, the, the interesting part is like, even when we're working with a lot of uh, different game uh, studio, uh, they would like to focus on their part and uh, uh, say, for example, if that is like an SDK, there's like an API endpoint that would handle all uh, everything for us and we can you know, focus on the part that we are good at. Yeah, so I yeah. think that is something uh, uh, quite, quite crucial. Yeah. It is, it is, yeah. Let me see if there's any other questions. I'll just quickly check the squad again. <laughs> Well, if there's no other questions, we could probably just, um, you know, wrap up just three minutes ahead of time here. I think uh, it's been a very good presentation. I learned a lot about the architecture of Kronos and um, like what you guys are trying to do by bridging two very big ecosystems there. And also with Rick's awesome SDK. <laughs> Would love to um, maybe dabble my hands into that for a bit if I have the time. Yeah, uh, I had a great time. Um, hope Glad everyone you liked else. It. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Mm, hope everyone else had a great time as well, and see you all again sometime. Catch you later. Take care. Bye. Bye.